pierogi. Okay. And this is a pretty simple dough. Although a lot of people, when they make pierogi dough, they don't add sour cream. Okay. I think this makes a much more tender dough. So what we're going to do is we need a couple of eggs in here. Okay. We would do the honors. Sure. Piece. So it's two eggs. All right. So okay. I wish I could do that egg cracking thing, you know, that fancy one. One 16 ounce container of sour cream. The whole container. See how easy this dough is. Okay. We need a little bit of salt. Okay, just whatever. Whatever. Just whatever. And we need anywhere from four and a half to five cups of flour. Okay. So I'm going to start off with two cups. I remember when we had our pierogi class, you, you said something about the dough. It was interesting the way you said it. You said it should be sticky but not stick. What did you say exactly? Sticky but not stick to your finger. You, you, when you touch it, it will feel like sticky, but it won't come off on your finger. Right. That's how you know when it's just right. Yep. If it doesn't feel sticky at all, it's too dry. And okay. when you go to seal the pierogi, they're not going to seal. Okay. They're going to come apart. And I thought that was interesting how she said that. Yeah. Like we'll show you as soon as we get going here. And these are my. Favorite. Oh my gosh, I yeah. love these. Well, like pierogi. I said, we're just making the potato and cheese one yep. because we can't make 50 different kinds on this program. Right. So we're just making one kind, my favorite. Yep. And I always have some of these in the freezer frozen. I still have from Pierogi Day, which yep. was what, a month ago we yep. did this? Yeah, it's about a month ago. I think I probably have maybe two dozen left. Wow. We made, what, three or four batches of pierogi. We ended up with 300 and something. Pierogi among the three of us that flour yeah. in there before I add the rest of it. Okay. I'm gonna hold on to that because sure. I might need it in a moment. Yep. So you've already got two cups of flour I in there. I just have two. Okay. We need at least four and a half, maybe five. We'll put in four and a half and then we'll see how we'll do the touch test. Okay. Because that is key. Not hard, but important. Don't look at it. Let's add, I'm going to add the two and a half now, and we'll see where we are. And then we're going to have fun putting these pierogi oh, together. Oh, it is fun making them. We had a, a little production line going with Pam and her two daughters, my sister, my niece, and it was just, it, it was a lot of fun. It is, and it's the type of thing that if you're going to do this, you might as well get a cup of coffee, sit down, and just, you know, enjoy the moment, enjoy being off your feet and you, know, you just start making them and it's very like, it's fun. It's just more fun eating them after. Oh, it is way more fun eating them. And to me, when we made them, we froze them on a cookie sheet that Lee lined with some parchment paper. And if you freeze them individually, then when they're frozen, you can just put them all in a nice zippy bag. And to me, that's like money in the bank. They're fresh pierogi in your freezer, ready right. to go. Because all you do is you take them out frozen, put them in a pot of boiling water. When they float to the top, take them out, then we put them in a frying pan with butter. And you can fry them either soft, like some people like them, just covered in butter. Yeah. Or you can fry them crisp. And so you come home and you want to make a fast meal. There you go. Throw a steak on the grill. Mm -hmm. Get the water boiling, make the pierogi. You've got salad maybe made. You've got a steak salad and pierogi. I mean, that's like, that's, that's like a really good meal to me. It is. And I, I have to be honest, my kids, they come home from school, they'll take a couple out of the freezer, they'll boil the water and fry them up, and that's their snack. I mean, it cracks me up, but they love them. They love them. Well, they are so good. They really are. And the dough, this dough is so nice because of that sour cream. That it really makes a difference. Some people just make it with just eggs and water. Mm -hmm. And and that's the original way. Right. This, I tell you, I don't know where I got this recipe. Yeah. This is the way my mother made it, and... And I think the sour cream, not only for making it a nice dough, gives it a lot of flavor. The sour cream yeah. has a lot of flavor. Okay, so we want sticky, sticky, but not sticking. Right. I think we're there. Yeah, I think we're there. Okay. And don't worry if it looks rough, because 
We're going to show you a trick on how it becomes nice and smooth. Yeah. You know what? I want to add just maybe a tablespoon of flour. Yeah. I'm getting just a little sticky. A little sticky, okay. So just, still a little. Oh, I'm so excited for this meal. Yeah, we've got, we're going to have cabbage, kapuska, we're going to have pierogi, and then we're going to have more Yeah, it's going to be so good. So we're going to need flour because we're going to get really messy when okay. we start doing this. You know what I can smell? I can smell the cheesecake in the oven. Can you? Yeah. I guess my nose is working as well. Okay, let's take a look at this now. There we go. That's it. Okay. That's it. That's exactly what we want. Okay, if you can put a little bit of flour sure. somewhere down on the board, just so that we can... Okay. I'm just gonna check my. You go cabbage. right ahead. Go right ahead. Oh, it's wilting down. All right. We're going to get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of the mixer. I'm going to go clean my hands off and then bring out the equipment that we need to make the pito and get the filling out of the refrigerator. So we'll be right back. Well, Pam, here's our dough. What I did is I took off a chunk. We're going to use a pasta machine to roll out our dough. Now, traditionally people would use a rolling pin and roll and roll and roll. With the pasta machine, I let the machine do the work and I always get the exact same thickness every time. Yep. With rolling out, you might get higher, lower, whatever. And what we're going to do is, Pam mentioned about putting them on a, a sheet to put them in the freezer. I, I, we're using wax paper today, it's a lot cheaper than parchment whatever but yeah and PM has a cutter here um this is a three and a half inch cutter I think it's three, three and a quarter three and a quarter but three and a half that's the size I like my sister-in-law likes to make them she likes to make pierogi that are really big I don't I like to make them smaller I, I like yeah them better, this is a good size and if you don't have a cutter you could use a tuna fish can or yeah anything can around can that, but these yeah. are cheap you can find these in any supermarket yeah. or any you can go to Walmart or any discount store and buy one yeah um the pasta machine. We're going to run it through on three different settings. One to, you know, get it a little bit thinner, then thinner and thinner. On my pasta machine, it happens to be, I'm going to use number one, number three, and number five. In another situation, you might use one, two, three. I really don't know. They're all a little bit different. So I'm going to run it through. This is the rough one. Sometimes you've got to run it through a couple of times. This dough oh really gosh. looks nice. It looks good. Look how easy that is. Yep. I'm going to move it up to number three. I want to get a little bit of flour because I don't want this to stick. If you've never used a pasta machine before, one thing you do not ever want to do is wash these. Yeah, that's one thing I know. You don't wash them. You just wipe them off with a little brush. Or... Yeah, brush them off because if you do, which I did with my first one, you will have a rusty piece of equipment which will, you cannot do anything with except throw away. Right. Number five. This will be the last one. And then Pam will start cutting and filling. Oh, how nice. Now, I'll take this over rolling out with a rolling pin any day. Yep. So, if I can just move this over sure so I thing. can keep rolling. There you go. Okay. You get any leftovers? You just keep rolling it through. I just keep adding more to it. And, roll it and then go back to number one. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to take a spoonful of the filling and put it, like, you know, on the lower half of the circle. Once now, I get a whole bunch of these if your dough out. is dry, you can get water and put it around. But this dough is nice. It's going to stick to itself. We won't need to do anything like that. Right. So then you fold it over, and it's real important. You've got to crimp it. you got to press these the two seams together really good. Like, if you think you've done it, just go back over it a couple times. Because if you don't, um, it will blow up when you boil them in the water, and it's nasty. You're just so, going to have starchy water with dough floating in it and it's just not really good. So just even if you think you've done it just go back and just doesn't hurt just to go around a couple times make sure it's all nice and sealed it kind of comes out like a, this isn't the prettiest one they'll get better but kind of like a like little crescent and then you just put it on your cookie sheet yep. and it's simple as that I mean this is really fun you just match up those little seams and you know just crimp and it. And don't use a fork to do this the fork will create those ridges and it'll it'll make it too thin and it you're not going to have a really good pierogi that way. No, this is how I, this is how I recognize them, just like this. I bet you could get, you know, what, 
fancier with your crimping than I am, but there. And then you just line them up, you know, make them look nice on your cookie sheet, just like that. Do one, two. The ketchup. We don't have a lot of room here in front of the camera. No. So. But you know, you just you, you kind of get into a rhythm making these. It just kind of you know you get going and you know you chat and. Yeah, it's a good thing to have to do with someone else. It's a, yeah. it's a good activity to do. You know, good for good rainy day activity too. Cool. And what I like to do with mine too afterwards is I like to give them just a little push and they kind oh. of fill in a little bit better. Well, that's a good idea. Oh, I see. It's just that. just yeah. just my personal thing. Yep. These are oh. and I've made a lot of pierogi. <laughs> yes, you have. But what you know, once you I mean, you can see that the ingredients are simple, and you know, once you get into the groove. Okay, now this one I rolled out, and mm -hmm. I got a much rougher surface, so I'm gonna put it through again. But I think what it is is very sticky, so I want to get a little bit of flour on it. Okay. <laughs> so this isn't like. Um, pie dough and some of those doughs that, you know, you got one shot at rolling it out and if you don't, no, it's a done no, no. deal. This, so. this dough you can, you can go over and over and over again. Which is, that's nice because we'll use all of it. Oh, we will. We will. As long as the potato holds out. And I think we're going to have probably leftover potato would be my guess. You think? Mm -hmm. But if you do, you can put the leftover filling in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. Oh, that's So the next good. time you can make, say, a half a batch of dough. Mm -hmm. You know, just cut your ingredients in half. Yep. As long as you get that consistency in the end. And then take it out of the freezer and you've got another batch. Yeah, that is awesome. Or you can make a full batch and then make some potato and cheese and some meat, some mushroom. Or cabbage. Cabbage. Yep. Um, how many do you get roughly out of a, let's say, a batch of the dough? From this, this batch, we will probably get anywhere from 60 to 80. 60 to 80. So, you know, you're talking quite a few meals. Yeah, quite a few meals. Well, it all depends on who's eating those meals. Uh, this is, some people can eat point. three, some people can eat 13. <laughs> that's a good point, Lee. That's a good point. Well, I know my kids, for their little afternoon snack, they can easily eat four or five. I mean, if I make a meal out of this, I will have six. Yeah. That will be, I will have nothing else with it. If I have it as a side dish, I'll probably have three, or four, <laughs> or five, <laughs> or five. Yep. I forgot to put it back down to one. Yep. So, and it, you know, I was thinking about this. What's interesting is, so in here is the potato and the cheese, but it seems um, to me that every culture has some sort of stuffed dough. Ravioli. Stuffed. Lee, you got pot flour sticker. right there. Actually, okay. that's okay. Ravioli, pot stickers. Yep. You know, every culture you're right has some type of stuffed dough. Yeah. Dough. And I thought, oh, now what happens in a case like this? This one I had a blowout. That's no good. That's no good. No, you're gonna no saving. No. no. Okay. Well, it happens. It happens. happens. We don't like when it happens, but it happens. But you know, when you're making sixty to seventy of these, you have a casualty every now and then. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially in my kitchen. Here's number one. And I keep getting holes in these for some reason. But that's okay. We can cut around the holes. Yep. Okay, I need a little bit more room. Okay, sorry. That's okay. I'm doing mass production of the dropping of the filling and then... I think I need flour on my fingers. I'll roll this last one out. Well, maybe I'll... Do a couple and play catch up with you. Because they do, they do um, look like the pot stickers when you made the pot stickers on the show. Mm -hmm. You know, same kind of shape here. Well, like you said, just about every culture you can think of has some type of stuffed pasta. I like it. Mm hmm. I like. It. I need some flour. Sticky, sticky. This dough is really, really nice. It is sticking beautifully. It's not, they're not gonna come apart at all. No. Nope. It's a nice dough to work with. It's soft. The other thing is, is that when you finish making all these, you're really covered in flour at the end of the yeah. day. When we Great. made that, when we had the pierogi class that couple of weeks ago, oh boy. And the flour everyone, was flying. <laughs> everyone was wearing flour. It's okay. It's a good thing to wear. Yeah. Told you, don't wear anything good when you do. Nope. It. 
And black. Plus you're and, wearing black. And black probably isn't the color of choice when you're in pierogi production. As we are. I'm smelling my cabbage. You want to give it a stir? Yeah, I think I'm going to. We're down to our last two. Yep. How many did we make, Pam? Uh, I think we made 86. It's around 86. That's amazing. It, out of one batch, four potatoes, one pound of cheese, a stick of butter. Yep. Some sour cream flour. And this is all that's left of the filling. I don't even know if that's worth freezing. I probably wouldn't freeze that. You know what? I might make little potato cakes and fry them. Ooh, just get them crunchy. Oh, why not? You don't want to waste them. <laughs> that's right. So, so we have all these trays of pierogies now. We've got one tray already in the freezer. Yep. And we've got all these and those. And we're going to now clean up our decks. Pam's going to finish up the cabbage. We're going to come back and we're going to show you all the finished products. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, I have the final ingredients for my cabbage dish, the kapusta. I have the sauerkraut, as I mentioned, it drained. So one can, small can of sauerkraut goes right in with the cabbage. All right. And then really, well, one of the best parts is this kielbasa. Um, this is a kielbasa made in Chicopee, Massachusetts, which they've got a lot of good Polish food going on out there and it is delicious. So if you can get a kielbasa that's local made um, in your area, you're, you're going to be ahead of the game here. So all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use half of this in the um, cabbage and then the other half I think we're going to fry up and eat it. Yum. So I'm going to just take it and you could cut this as small as you'd like. Um, this is sort of to preference. Um, I'm going to cut the half of the link in half. And then I'm just going to cut it in little, match it back together, and I'm just going to cut it in little slices. You could go on an angle. You could make these smaller, bigger. I don't know. This is up to you. I'm just, I'm not even going to worry about it. It's going to be so good. I don't care how big the pieces are. So, and then this is just going to go back in the pot and then probably cook it another, I don't know, another 40, 45 minutes. I mean, this kielbasa is already cooked, so you don't have to worry about that. And the pork spare ribs are now cooked in there. So it's just cooking it down and, you know, getting the flavors. You really want the flavors of this delicious local made kielbasa to get all into the cabbage because there's wonderful spices in here. I don't know what they use, but it's good. So, then they're just going in. Doesn't that look good? Yum. How's it taste? Oh my goodness, that's really good. Yeah? Isn't it good? Yeah, sometimes when you get kielbasa, all you taste is the garlic. Yeah. I taste the meat. Yeah. It's that's great. really good. Mm -hmm. Get that lid for me. So in it goes. So all that good flavor is going to go all around the cabbage. I'm telling you, this is like that fabulous. Is, that is one good kielbasa. <laughs> good kielbasa. So we're just going to put the lid back on that. I'm going to cut this up, we're going to fry this and eat it, and then we're going to bring it all together. We're going to boil some pierogi, and then we're going to have a Polish feast. Oh, it's going to be so good. Okay, here's our food. We're ready to eat. Oh, we've got Pam's cabbage. Oh yeah, we got the cabbage, and I'm I mean, going to serve that, that up. Oh my that, lord. Look at the pieces of the kielbasa in there. Oh, I can't even just, just, tell you. I should have served you first. Yeah. What's wrong with me? Yeah. <laughs> Here, lady. I think you're hungry. Pass, pass your plate over. This is way past our lunch time, by the way. Oh, it is. Here, let me get you. No, nice. that's fine for now. You're good? Yeah, okay. okay. Well, i got to save room for all this other stuff. <laughs> and then we took the rest of the kielbasa and we cut it up. And as a good Polish girl, I have a little horseradish on the side. I can't have that without. Here are our pierogi. And those are the mashed potatoes that we had left that we made little cakes out of them. I think if I were to do that again, I would add a little bit of flour to that just so they would stay together a little soft. And there's our Polish cheesecake. I'd cut it, but it's so hot. Yeah, we'll have a still picture of it on the website so you can see what it looks like when it's cut open. But oh, oh, oh. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, that I mean, is... and look at this meal. This is a Polish feast. Wish you were here. Don't you love that? Mm. Well, that was a piece of the pork sparrow. It just fell apart in my mouth. It was absolutely delicious. 
So yum. We hope you enjoyed our little culinary tour of Poland today. Because there's so many other things we could have made. But right. This is what we made today. We made some of our favorites. So we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you come back next time. <laughs> Pam's mouth is full. <laughs> Could she speak to this? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to eat. So, yeah. cameraman, bye-bye. Bye. Pierogies, please. Mm -hmm. I'm just using my fingers. Mm. Oh. oh, I'm taking two. <laughs> I'm taking three. <laughs>